Hey everyone, Cody here, and today in this video I want to share some marketing strategies that as an artist have been working for me, at least helping out, and just some things that I wanted to share that you could definitely think about or try uh, in your own uh, business or your if you you know if you are an artist as a hobby and you're just looking to sell more. Uh, just some things to implement into what you do as an artist to consider to maybe sell more. Now this has been helping me to sell more just this year. I sold three paintings in two weeks and that doesn't sound like a lot, but those paintings are worth anywhere from three to $700 a piece. So obviously I don't see all that money. There's taxes, fees, and then part of my money goes to charity. So I really see a, a fraction of that, but still at the same time, the purchase price is hundreds of dollars per piece. Now I know that there's people selling more paintings out there uh, for more money. But again, this is something, the, the things I want to share to you or share with you today are twofold. So there's two parts to it. There's the mindset and then there's the actual marketing. So M&M, right? Like the candy. Uh, so the first part is the mindset. So the biggest thing that, that comes down to any purchase you ever make is value. You know, what is the value that you're going to get out of that piece? And I, it still surprises me to this day. And I apologize if I'm stuffy because allergies. But anyway, it comes down to value. What is the value that that person's gonna get out of that piece? And it, it still surprises me to this day that people would actually buy art from me because I'm just a, just a regular person, right, that makes art, but people actually buy it. And I won't, I won't, when we get to the marketing, we'll kind of talk about some things uh, that have just kind of, I've been seeing traction with. So the first part is value. Um, you know, what is the value that you're providing? Yes, you're providing art, but what makes that piece unique or exciting for you or for the person that's buying it, right? So what I've found is that yes, art is very visual. So obviously people are attracted to it visually, but I've also had people tell me that they bought a piece because of the story behind it. So either I left a little story about how it was made or what it meant to be or what inspired the piece. And it's funny because a lot of times, I, for a while I wasn't doing that. And I didn't think it was important. I thought that just getting the stuff out there was more important. And, and it is important, and we'll talk about that in the marketing aspect. But really it's the value. So if you can at least impart some part of you into the art itself, then it stands a better chance, I think, at selling. Because it's very easy for anyone to just create pieces, just like this, right? Anyone could make a piece like this especially because I have a tutorial on it. But moreover, this piece means something to me because of the colors and the like the method behind it, right? The scrape thing is just kind of what I do. But also in the video that I did, you get to see that. So I provided value for the painting. Um, so if you can provide value for it with maybe the story or how it was made or what inspired you or just what it means to you, it gives it that little extra piece and I've had literally people tell me that when they bought a piece it was because it had a story or because it meant something it wasn't just a piece that was just made especially with abstract but it wasn't just a piece that was made it meant something right so you're not just making art you're this is literally a piece of you that you're sharing with other people so if you can impart that that value into the piece it makes it literally more valuable because it's not just a painting but you know, maybe that painting represents your depression or what you think of the world or just something you were going through or an idea, uh, uh, you know, maybe you just, you the colors mean something. It doesn't matter. If you can provide that value to someone, it makes it more attractive to the other person because it's not just a piece, but it's part of you that they're really buying. The second part on the mindset thing is over delivering. And I talk about this a lot, but really I have been seeing great results with it. So let me give you some examples. Over delivering every time. First off is just being, giving stuff away for free. This is something I've been doing more of. I mean like these videos, I've been giving out these, this content and it's not a big deal to some people but really it's a big deal for me because I'm, I'm giving a part of myself to other people to, to watch and enjoy. If you're watching this video, I'm sharing my time with you. And, and I respect your time, I, I really do. It means a lot to me and I'm very grateful that you would even watch this video. But coming back to the content part of it, 
uh, just over delivering. So giving stuff for free or giving things unexpected or just going above and beyond what is expected. So for me, sometimes that means I give free paintings away. And as, as a person who does not make a full-time income as an artist, I don't. It's a little easier for me. I think if you're a full-time artist, then that might be harder for you to do, but there, there, there could be other things that you could do that over deliver, right? But for me, it's been giving paintings away. So uh, sometimes when people buy or you know expensive piece or something, I'll give them an extra painting or I'll give them a, a coupon for a discounted other piece. You know, I've had people that were just so blown away that I gave them something extra that they were just so grateful for that and they bought more from me or they shared it with other people because I over delivered. So you always want to under deliver or I mean, sorry, sorry, under promise, but over deliver because then that builds that value kind of going back to the first part. So over delivering, um, if you can give free pieces away or if you can give free content away like this, like where you, you show how you made it or, you know, you just share like you, you go in uh, talk to those people and you know you build a relationship with so I recently sold my first piece on Saatchi art and That lady actually reached out to me on Facebook did not know who this person was But she's like I love this painting and we started talking and you know We didn't talk a lot But just in that like we were able to kind of just exchange ideas and, and just talk and become actual real communication like between people today I actually literally and I, I'm so excited to do this video because Today I just sold another painting, and this painting was like 600 something dollars that I sold. This is literally the most expensive single piece that I've ever sold. Now I've sold paintings for groups of money up to that, but I've never sold a single piece that was over, uh, I believe over $400 up to this point. Today I sold my first piece for over $600. And that's incredible to me. <clears throat> Again, I won't see all that, but still just the idea that someone would pay that for something that I did it is very humbling. And I plan on over delivering because I probably will give them another painting that they weren't expecting. I, I just, I think I'm gonna do that anyway, just because I, I feel really strongly about over delivering. I want their experience to, to be so good that they come back or at least share me with other people. Hey, this guy didn't just give me his painting. He gave me another painting for free the value on it's like at least going to be a hundred dollars or more for that extra painting so that maybe they give that as a gift to someone else and it brings in more business or maybe they frame it up in their house and someone sees the big painting that they bought and they're like oh that's cool but then they see this other like wow that's really cool it doesn't matter the point is is that it's over delivering because it builds such a good experience and even in my work life i don't paint for a living i have a job and I work at a call center, but in my call center, I do really well because I over deliver. I do the unexpected. I do the things that people are not expecting that makes them want to come back. That's that's all it comes down to. So just caring and over delivering. So I know it sounds kind of, I don't know, froofy or, or whatever, right? Like I'm just giving you filler, but I'm not. I'm really not. Friday, on Friday. So today is tu Tuesday. Yes, today's Tuesday, uh, February 12th. On Friday, I went down and gave a painting that was worth hundreds of dollars. I gave it away for free to a business. Just a guy that I met here locally in Phoenix. Actually, his name is Skyler. I won't even leave him anonymous. I'm going to shout him out because I'm going to link to him in the description area because he's awesome. But I, I just talked to Skyler for just a few times. And I was like, hey, man, could you use some art? He's like, yeah, why not? I gave him the painting. I didn't even char I didn't charge. I didn't ask for anything. I just gave him the painting and said, "Hey, man, you know, it's just hanging around my house, and I like the painting, but you know, I, I think it would look really good in your office." Gave him the painting. He in turn gave me free, basically, pub publicity on his social media for doing that. I didn't ask him to. I didn't ask for anything in return. I gave without expectation. And I talked about this in my last video about giving without expectation. I just gave it to him. I'm like, look, if this, if nothing comes out of it, I'll feel good because I'm getting my art in the world. And it's promotion for that. But it came back in spades. And today I sold it. And they're not directly correlated, but I feel strongly in my soul that in a way they are. 
because if you give value, you get value. You you get what you put out, right? You don't see it right away, and you don't only see it the way that you would expect. But by God, this is real, okay? So let's get into the marketing aspect. So that's the mind, mindset aspect, right? And I thank God for just the sale and every sale I've ever had. But I'm telling you the truth, like over deliver, okay? Over deliver and... Uh, Whatever the first thing was, I can't remember because I'm tired. <laughs> but anyway, I'm being dead serious, okay? So if you can learn to do that, to over-deliver, and I honestly don't even remember what the first thing was. The I'm, I'm not even kidding. I'm so tired right now. But if you can do those things, it's, it's going to go well with you, okay? So let's get into the marketing. And, I, and I'm, so, I so, I'm so sorry that I'm tired in this video. I just like, I had to get it out before I forgot or, you know, before the moment passed. I just had some quiet time. So anyway, coming back. Okay, let's get into the marketing. Two things for the marketing. First one, scale. The second one is uh, like focus. Okay, so scale and focus. So to kind of distill them into words. So let's talk about scale. First off, this year, I have been putting out content like crazy. And I'm not saying just garbage content, just, just whatever, right? It, it's, very, it's very planned, okay? So I only have two platforms that I'm focusing on. I tried to follow all these different platforms. I tried to do a blog for art, which is, it's difficult. I'm not saying it can't be done, but it's difficult because people who are going for art need the visual, but blogging is reading, so it's a little harder. A podcast makes no sense to me for art, Again, can't not saying it can't be done, but it makes no sense for you. So I was like, okay, I need to go in on the two visual platforms that I know are very important right now, are very big, Instagram and YouTube. So I've kind of gone all in on those two platforms, okay? So if you've been a follower of mine, which I don't have many YouTube followers, but I'm grateful for all of them. If you've been following me at all, you'll notice that uh, I've been putting out more content this year than I did all of last year, I think. Uh, probably maybe maybe it's matched but I will put out way more content this year because this has been getting me traction and I've even had people buy my art because they saw it on YouTube and it's funny because I in my head I was like well if I show people how to make their make my art they won't want to buy it but that's not the case the people that were really the people that were going to make the art are going to make it anyway and the people that were going to buy the art are going to be more interested because they got to see how it was made so it's kind of like the story of how that piece came to be so i had to get away from that thinking of like oh i don't want to show everybody how i make it then they won't want to buy it that was the exact opposite because then they get emotionally invested so anyway coming back so first is scale so i've been cutting putting out more content but second part of that is focus on specific platforms so if you've watched any of my videos or listened to me or saw any of my instagram posts i've been going full on with only instagram and youtube because i feel like those are the two best ones for me for for art now i'm not saying there aren't other platforms but as far as social media goes i've just been focusing on those two so that's my focus is just instagram and youtube and it's youtube whenever i get a chance to record and it's instagram when i don't and Instagram is very specific. Um, I'll do like close-ups. I'll do finished products. Um, I'll do, you know, just close, like uh, just posts about something, I guess, like text. I don't, I try not to do a lot of text posts, but you know, like close-ups and, and full shot pictures and like part of the process, just kind of the overall thing, like the whole uh, process of the art thing right <laughs> the whole process so that's that's instagram youtube is literally the pro it's it's what i've come to realize is that what i love doing is just sharing the process and so that's what you if you look at my instagram or my youtube that's what it's kind of becoming is the process of making and buying or making and buying making and selling art okay so a lot of my videos if you look at the content lately it's it's like this where i talk about the process or i talk about the pieces right or the process uh, overall, because people are interested in that. They Whether they're gonna buy the piece or whether they're just interested in making their own, that content is useful for them either way. So the, the YouTube and the Instagram is really just like the process of the pieces from the making, which is more on YouTube, to the selling, which is more on Instagram, okay? So 
pieces, they kind of go together. And those are my two platforms for social media. And I've been doing more of that. So really it comes down to scale, not only in the content, but also in the pieces. So I've, I've realized this. I had, when I started painting, I had this really big ego that I was just gonna make all these big paintings and I was gonna sell all these big paintings for a lot of money and uh, I was gonna quit my day job and just make a ton of money selling these big paintings. Again, I'm not gonna say it's not possible, but it didn't happen for me. In fact, most of the people that I tried to, to sell these big paintings to, they just don't have the room for them or they just can't afford them. I mean, it's not cheap, right? I sell six by three paintings, six foot by three paintings. And they are expensive, okay? I'm just gonna tell you that because if I have to ship that, I have to crate the whole thing. I've gotta get all those materials. I mean, just the materials alone to ship it would probably be over $100, maybe 100 if I can get good deals or if I already have some of the materials, but I'd have to make the crate, wrap the whole thing. That's a lot, okay? So that being the case, uh, it, I was like, okay, if I really wanna grow my business, I need to build a portfolio, and it's really expensive to do on really big pieces. And so this is ultimately why I started doing smaller paintings on, on watercolor paper and smaller canvases, because I want to grow the portfolio. Because if I have more pieces available, then it builds out that portfolio. In a, in a, a portfolio of 30 small pieces looks better than a portfolio of for large pieces, right? You don't really get the scale, but when you see a bunch of small pieces, when you see all of the visual pieces, it gives that person an idea, not only one, that it, it gives you, it gives them a couple of impressions. One, that you do know what you're, what you're doing because you can create that style over and over again. But two, that you're, you're not just starting out, you've been doing this for a while. Me, I've created, I believe, over 200 paintings by now. That's not nothing. And I get people who ask me questions about like, oh yeah, you know, should I start selling this? This is my first piece. And I'm like, I didn't sell my first pieces. I think I didn't sell a piece until I was about 60 pieces in. <laughs> I'm not even kidding you. Like my first piece, I, I, I spent a lot of money uh, on paints and, and, and canvas and all that before I started selling paints. And I'll not say that that's gonna be the case for you, but I created a lot of painting. To, to really get the fundamentals of colors and, and balance and um, the way that they mix, the way that the tools work, the way the canvas works. It took me a long time is essentially what I'm trying to say. So scale both of the content, but also in the pieces. If you could do more smaller pieces, I'm not saying that you have to stay there and that's all you have to do, but to build out a portfolio, it gives you that great visual aid for the buyers because then they can see um, what it is you're all about, right? So, and then focusing on not only the social media aspect and, and knowing what platforms are good for you. For me, it's it's YouTube and Instagram because YouTube, I can do the, the process of showing them how I make the painting. Instagram, it's more of like the finished product, um, when they sell, close-ups, um, testimonials, kind of that stuff. So like the, the quick snapshot things. You could do like time lapse on on Instagram too, and people love that stuff. So if you can do those on there, I'm just I'm just too lazy to to compress all my videos down real small. So uh, like to to shorten them down to one minute, that's a lot of work. So I just don't do it. No, I should because I'm sure I would get more traction. I just don't. So that is it. Um, now as far as selling websites, all right. So where do I sell my art? I figured I'd just throw this in there. It's already a long video, so if you stuck with me this this long, I appreciate you. I'll finish with this. I only sell on two websites. Um, two website, two websites. I only sell on two websites. Um, I used to try to sell on all these different websites. You know, uh, like I tried to get on the Art Finder, Zatista. And, yeah, you know, I, like I tried to use like Amazon and Etsy and eBay and all of a sudden I just stopped. Look, it's a lot of work to kind of manage all those websites. I just kind of cut down to literally two places. One, my website and two, Saatchi Art. Saatchi Art has been pretty good for me so far. I, I don't have complaints. The only thing that I would say is like it takes forever to get paid out. But the, but the overall experience has been good. Okay, so... They have very strict guidelines on packaging, but I think that's good because it protects the buyer. And I've it's actually forced me out of my comfort zone to have to adhere to these 
these guidelines and I've sold two pieces now and they're in two weeks. Um, and I think I've made with those two pieces combined, I think I've made over a thousand dollars in, in the raw sales, but not what I actually made as, as the artist. So, I mean, I've, that's a lot for me as an artist to make in one month, just in art sales, just from Saatchi art. So again, that's just what works for me. I'm not telling you where to do it or where to go, but see with my website, I can control the prices. I control, you know, what ads there are. I can, or I mean the, uh, like the, the coupons and stuff like that. I control all of that on my site. So I have a lot of, I have the con complete control on my site. So that's why I sell my site. And then Sachi Art for me has been good because it's, it's literally the world's biggest online gallery. And they just, they have buyers of so many different ranges. So literally if you make small paintings, like they have buyers for that. But if you make large expensive paintings, they have buyers for that too, which is super cool. So those, those are literally the only two sites. I may look into some other ones. Like uh, I may try to get back onto our finder or Zatista or something like that. Uh, because I think they have good buyer bases if I can get into them. I think once I have some more pieces, I, I might reach out to them and, and see if I can get approved. Uh, but essentially for now, those are the only two, just because those are the two big ones. So I may as well, one, have my own site because it's just natural these days. But two, sell through such ever because it's so large and I, and it's been selling for me. So can't. what do I say, you know? But anyway, guys... Thank you so much for watching this video. If you watched it all the way through, you are the best person ever. And I really appreciate every person that's ever watched any of my videos because I know how boring I am. But I'm very grateful for that. I hope this video helps you. If you're an artist, I really hope that it helps you. If you have a product or, or service that you sell, hey, maybe you got some kind of tips out of this. I don't know. You, and you can also kind of see some of the process from me. But uh, that's pretty much it. I really appreciate you guys. If you like this video, please like, rate, share, subscribe, any of that cool stuff. And I will catch you guys in another video. God bless.